a film that I think inspires Star Wars and The Matrix, this is my review for the 1927 film Metropolis. A V N. It's headphones sale. Phones Neil here, back with another film review, and like I mentioned in the header, that this is going to be my review for the 1927 film Metropolis, but in this case it's going to be the version titled The Complete Metropolis, which includes about 25 minutes or so of found footage that was previously thought to be lost, and is considered, I guess, the full version of the film. Um, based on reading some of the trivia, um, it seems like there's still some scenes and content that was that is missing. But in general, this is the most complete version of the film that is uh, said to have been found. Um, there is some content that was not able to be restored and it, as part of an old conversion from, I want to say the 70 or 60 millimeter film to 16 millimeter film, there was a lot of degradation, it wasn't very well done, and that sort of thing. So they still included that content, but they provide that with the caveat that um, because that content's not restored, they're gonna it's gonna be very grainy. There's um, portions that are blacked out because they're unable to restore it, or the film's not that good, and things like that. So uh, when you are watching the film, that's one of those things to take note of. So in general, in watching the film, I want to say that for the most part, it is a very good film. You can it does a lot of stuff that is ahead of its time for what it's doing. The only downside that I found in the film is that um, the main protagonist character, the son of the uh, guy who built Metropolis, felt very out of place as far as as acting go. He was too peppy too spunky and generally it felt like his character was way too out of place for what they were portraying in the film um so he felt a lot like a luke skywalker but the acting of a uh, jar jar binks so if you had, if the entire original trilogy of the star wars films had been like that or even just the first one i don't think that the film would have held up as um, well as it did so when i was watching the film like the father of the that guy was a good actor the guy he fired the um girlfriend all the workers beneath the city um the guy who the protagonist replaces for that weird clock thingy um the mad scientist and all of that all of that was general it was very well done i liked the overall acting and portrayal and all of that but just every time that that son showed up on screen it felt like he was overacting his way through it so it kind of took me out of the film and it didn't really have it wasn't really something that really like i didn't really find that i was endeared to him all that much so um for me um, that was one of those things where, um, in watching the film, like if they remake it, I kind of don't want them to do that sort of thing again. So, um, my review was going to kind of be one of those things where I will account for that, but that's definitely a downside in the overall production of the film um so aside from that in watching the film the one thing that stood out or this one thing that stands out immediately and i'm gonna get these out of the way because they don't really work overall with the theme of the film but when you're looking at the production quality of it overall the set designs and pieces are very well done and the one thing that you get that they portray well is that the workers uh, move like their Oompa Loompas but you can see that they're beat down overworked and things like that so when you watch films like 1984 the George Orwell film and novel is gets you get a feeling along the lines of that to the point where I wonder if 1984 drew the inspiration for some of its themes from this film and the one thing that was kind of funny to me was in the opening sequence when they're doing an overview of the city which feels like a very Coruscant style of city is 
that the planes make perfect right turns, so there's not really one. It doesn't really take into account airfare that you do have to bank right and left. Planes don't turn on a dime like cars do, so that's kind of one of those things that they're. I guess at the time they're hoping that you don't see, but kind of stands out when you're watching it. So when I was watching the film, it overall it stood out to me, and I had to rewind it to take a look at it, but. In the grand scheme of things, they it was well designed as far as having trains and planes flying through the city and the grandioseness of it played well, but little things like that stood out. But overall, the set design was very well done. Um, and then when we go into the office of the, um, the father figure who runs and has been building Metropolis, they have this scrolling system of data, kind of like a vertical stock ticker, but it looked a lot like an early version of the matrix code that we see scrolling vertically like on the computer screens and in the intro and all of that. So I, it feels like the matrix drew us in per, inspiration from this and did a better version of it because we have the better we have better technology um, in hand as, as far as um, being able to portray that very well. Um, and then f from there, that's kind of from there the rest of the film kind of you get various elements that take where you see the star wars and the matrix taking it, their um cues from this film so for example the uh lady who the, the mad scientist is trying to revive is a obvious nod to c-3po from star wars so you get a very similar design and even if you look at the um concept art of star wars the c-3po in that image is very much reminiscent of the droid in this design um feeder the son his father is basically a tarkin level character with his seriousness his threats his ability to fire people and control people and the guy he fires was kind of along the mix between krennic and the guy from the first death star who tells him to flee and tarkin waves him off so you get a very you get very subtle and some obvious connections there so and then, like I mentioned earlier, the panning shots of the city of Metropolis are very reminiscent of Coruscant, so you could almost put them side by side and you can see the similarities and design, um, the borrowing of designs between the two. Um, and then when you have the um, creation of that robot lady into the new lady, you get an almost Westworld level conversion to the point where like instead of downloading the data into a, the robot like we see in Westworld we have basically a when they show the or we have you know, all the tubes and smoke so it's more of a steampunk version of that conversion but you kind of wonder if Westworld also took their cue from um this movie as far as how robots should be created but that whole sequence I thought was very well done while not necessarily practical, it was actually very visually appealing, even in black and white. So I thought that scene was probably the other one that held up um, the most. So um, I thought that was a good, that's probably my favorite scene in the film. And then finally, as far as the overall uh, thematic elements, it, very, it kind of felt like Matrix drew its inspiration from here as far as the robot overlords controlling humans and the humans fighting back whereas in metropolis we have well it's all humans but we have you know um the upper class the rich class controlling the working class keeping them down and them ultimately um um rising up against the their their rich upper class overlords and wanting to feel or free themselves um, so it's one of those things where I think Metropolis also was able to portray that very well for the time and then like the confusion of the robot lady looking like the real lady so the working class beginning their uprising and the guy um, um, telling them that they're looking at the wrong person and when they ultimately burn the robot they realize who the real inspiration lady is so overall all of that stuff was very well portrayed so you kind of see how this film was an inspiration for a number of films going forward now as far as the downside to the film so granted it is a silent film so it's all soundtrack but for me the soundtrack didn't really match up very well um 
to um um to what was to what was on screen so when you're watching um it doesn't really like the dramatic sequences um didn't feel too dramatic the music was still orchestral and over the top and um when there's like quiet serious moments there's the music doesn't really hold off and like and none of that so that kind of threw me off and then when we have the cue card show up there it feels like there wasn't enough cue cards so like they started off really slow on the cue cards and then they picked up um over the course of the film so by the end there were a lot more so it was one of those things where if you you have to really pay attention and for a cue card to come up because in the beginning there's very few so you're kind of relying on what's going on you kind of figure out that there's um that the son is you know has a free spirit the father is very serious he's very he's firing the guy at the office and all of that but it kind of wanted a few more cue cards so it would have been nice to have them there but um that's one of those things that granted for the time they it was probably not in the budget or they didn't really um um want to do that they wanted to rely more on the acting i guess so it's one of those things where um i don't know it just felt like early on there could have been more of the cue cards with uh fewer of them going forward because by the end of it it's easier to um see what's going on and then also by the end of the film um you or i guess i I want to say that there were a lot of so the complete metropolis film has a lot of those old a lot of restored content in it but i want to say that a lot of the restored content from what i could tell doesn't feel like it needed to be re-added so there was a lot of scenes where we have um people going back and forth we have a lot of the crowds running a lot of people looking at each other so a lot of that felt repetitive and unnecessary to be in the film so when watching the film i was like how many it makes you wonder if they use for one reuse the same shots over and over which i don't couldn't really tell for sure if that's what they did but in watching it feels like that's what they were doing to make the progression seem or show a lot more of the progression of an uprising going on so for me a lot of that didn't really need to be in there so when you are watching the film um it's one of those things where um that kind of stands out so if i wanted to sit through the film again to see how that all um, holds up I probably want to watch the original version of the film that's around two hours or less, maybe an hour 40, to see um, which one holds up better or which one is um, the better film in the series. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can or even feedback of your own if you've seen the film and what you think of it you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for um past episodes of Tripton links supporting the show and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and review and until next time